Procurement Act 2023 Knowledge Drop Series for Suppliers Part 1 of 3 Introduction This series of knowledge drops is designed to provide an overview of the Procurement Act 2023. It is aimed at suppliers who deliver contracts to the UK public, utilities and defence sectors, who take part in competitive procurements or have delivered contracts under the Public Contracts Regulations 2015, the set of rules followed by most contracting authorities, the Utilities Contracts Regulations 2016, the Defence and Security Public Contracts Regulations 2011 and the Concession Contracts Regulations 2016 or new entrants who would like to do so in the future. It is designed to explain the key changes to the previous regulations and how this may influence how you do business with the UK public utilities or defence sectors accordingly. In this series of knowledge drops, the Procurement Act refers to the Procurement Act and the regulations made under it. The purpose of this knowledge drop series there are some key differences between the Procurement Act and the regulations that preceded it. The Procurement Act is a simpler and more flexible set of rules that makes it easier for contracting authorities to undertake procurement activities that are fit for purpose and meet organisational needs, national and local objectives and that deliver value for money. In order to take full advantage of these flexibilities, it is important that suppliers to the public utilities and defence sectors understand the changes to the previous regulations and how these changes may affect the way you do business with contracting authorities. By the end of this Knowledge Drop series, you will have a greater awareness and understanding of the main changes under the new Procurement Act and how these may affect you and your organisation. The benefits of the new, more flexible procedures and how this may help streamline how you engage with contracting authorities, demonstrate your capabilities, increase opportunities for negotiation and engagement and help to promote innovation. The new central digital platform and how its functionalities will reduce administration and make it easier for you to access new procurement opportunities covered by the Procurement Act. Your obligations under the new rules as a supplier and the key actions you may need to take and consider to prepare for the changes. Who does the Procurement Act apply to? The Procurement Act applies to contracting authorities. The Act defines a contracting authority as either a public authority or, in relation to a utilities contract, a public authority, public undertaking or private utility. This typically includes central government departments and their arm's length bodies, local authorities and NHS trusts many schools and universities, some housing associations and health bodies. The Procurement Act applies to contracting authorities in England, Wales and Northern Ireland and to contracting authorities with reserved functions carrying out procurement in Scotland. Public procurement is a devolved issue and Welsh ministers and Northern Ireland have chosen to join the Procurement Act. The Scottish Government will continue to have its own legislation regulating devolved Scottish authorities. However, regulations will allow Scottish contracting authorities to make use of certain contracts, such as frameworks, established under the Act. The Procurement Act applies in full for contracting authorities where the value of their procurement exceeds the threshold for the relevant contract as detailed in Schedule 1 of the Act. 
some devolved Welsh and transferred Northern Ireland procurements are exempt from a small number of requirements of the Procurement Act. In addition, a number of other specific exemptions apply to certain utilities, defence and health care. Fact sheets with further information on these can also be found on the Transforming Public Procurement page at gov.uk, along with any other guidance published by the Government. Why is there a new Procurement Act? At approximately £300 billion, public procurement accounts for around a third of all public expenditure every year. Prior to leaving the EU, UK public procurement legislation was tied to EU directives and consisted of four separate sets of regulations, as previously mentioned. The Public Contracts Regulations 2015, the Utilities Contracts Regulations 2016, the Defence and Security Public Contracts Regulations 2011 and the Concession Contracts Regulations 2016. Following the UK's exit from the EU, we have the opportunity to improve how our procurement is regulated, consolidating and streamlining four sets of regulations into one simplified set of rules for suppliers to follow. The Procurement Act is also designed to deliver a number of benefits to suppliers, including increased visibility of new procurement opportunities, greater scope for pre-market engagement with contracting authorities, the ability to showcase innovation and supply innovative solutions, strengthened prompt payment provisions, more consistent feedback following a procurement exercise in the form of assessment summaries, which may be accompanied by supplementary information, akin to debrief or standstill letters. A simplified tendering process with a new central digital platform and a way for suppliers to submit their core business information. Our international obligations. The Procurement Act is designed to make sure that contracting authorities can identify the most advantageous offers through fair and open competition, consistent with the international commitments that give UK businesses access to overseas markets, including the World Trade Organisation Government Procurement Agreement, which alone gives UK businesses guaranteed access to £1.3 trillion in public procurement opportunities overseas, these principles may be familiar to you if you've worked under the previous regulations. To secure this access, the UK has agreed to give suppliers from other specified countries access to certain procurement opportunities in the UK on a non-discriminatory basis. In practice, this simply means that a supplier that is not from the UK must have a right to tender and be treated the same as UK suppliers in procurements that are covered by these international agreements. We will now outline some of the main changes in the Procurement Act and what the expected benefits are for suppliers. New Procurement Objectives and National Priorities From the start of a procurement, including the initial market engagement stage, all the way through to awarding a contract, contracting authorities will have to give appropriate consideration to the procurement objectives, as set out in the Procurement Act. The objectives are Delivering value for money Although this is not a new concept, contracting authorities must aim to achieve the best mix of quality and price throughout the lifetime of the contract. As a supplier, you will be given the opportunity to demonstrate the value that you can provide to that particular organisation and the communities that they serve, where this is non-discriminatory and linked to the delivery of the contract. Maximising public benefit. Contracting authorities 
must think about the extent to which the contract can deliver greater benefit, again allowing suppliers to showcase solutions that, for example, improve economic, environmental and social value. Sharing information Transparency is still a key consideration and contracting authorities will be required to share information with suppliers so that you can understand their policies and decisions. This is the minimum obligation, but further steps have been taken to embed improved transparency throughout the procurement life cycle. Acting and importantly being seen to act with integrity. Contracting authorities are tasked with preventing fraud, corruption and misconduct by demonstrating good management and control over their processes, which should give you as a supplier confidence that contracts are being properly procured and managed. Treat suppliers the same. Contracting authorities are still required to treat suppliers the same when carrying out a procurement and ensure that you are competing for a contract under equal terms. This is unless there is a difference between suppliers which justifies different treatment. So, for example, where there is a deadline for submission of tenders, the contracting authority should not accept late tenders from one supplier but not from others. That would be a clear breach of equal treatment. Similar points can be made in relation to any clear rules, including other deadlines, word count limits, minimum quality or quantity standards, etc. Do not put a supplier at an unfair advantage or disadvantage. If different treatment of suppliers is justified, Contracting authorities must take the appropriate steps to ensure they do not put a supplier at an unfair advantage or disadvantage. An example of different treatment might be where a potential conflict of interest has been identified in relation to one supplier and not another supplier. It would be a justified request from a contracting authority to require the former supplier to take certain steps to ensure that the potential conflict does not lead to an unfair advantage, which will not necessarily be needed for the latter supplier. There is also a new duty for contracting authorities to have regard to small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, participation, and to reduce the barriers they may face. To put this in practical terms, Contracting authorities will need to specifically consider procurements from an SME's perspective. For example, whether the tender response times are realistic when some smaller suppliers do not have a dedicated bidding team. A separate knowledge drop about the benefits of the new regime for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises, and voluntary community and social enterprises, VCSEs, can be found on the Transforming Public Procurement page at gov.uk. National Procurement Policy Statement and Wales Procurement Policy Statement Alongside these objectives, the Procurement Act also provides a power for ministers to publish a National Procurement Policy Statement, which will set out the national strategic priorities for public procurement and how contracting authorities in England and those exercising non-devolved functions in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland can support their delivery. Contracting authorities must have regard to the relevant priorities alongside other local priorities when carrying out procurements. Welsh ministers have the power to publish a Wales Procurement Policy Statement which will set out the strategic direction for public procurement in Wales. It will set out principles, considerations and intended outcomes that devolved Welsh authorities must have regard to whilst undertaking public procurements. The National Procurement Policy Statement and the Wales Procurement Policy Statement 
will give you greater visibility of the national priorities that will be considered during the procurement of appropriate contracts. This will help to provide you a steer on where you can best allocate resources to meet collective outcomes, while still enabling you to tailor your proposals to best match any relevant local priorities, all of which will be clearly set out in the tender documents for every procurement. The National Procurement Policy Statement and the Wales Procurement Policy Statement may be amended or replaced at any point following the required consultation and approval by Parliament. Northern Ireland will continue to implement public procurement policy through procurement policy notes. Recap You should now understand the purpose of the Procurement Act, including the reasons for the new Procurement Act, that there are some exemptions that apply to certain authorities and contracts, the procurement objectives and the National Procurement Policy Statement and the Welsh Procurement Policy Statement that must be considered in your procurements. In part two of this Knowledge Drop series, we will cover new requirements for contracting authorities to complete conflicts of interest assessments, how the Act makes it easier for suppliers to participate in procurements through the introduction of a new central digital platform and early market engagement, understanding the full range of value for money considerations that contracting authorities may consider in their procurements, changes to procurement procedures including the new competitive flexible procedure and grounds for direct award the introduction of new open frameworks and dynamic markets. This material has been produced for the purpose of learning and development and does not constitute and should not be relied upon as legal advice. This material is accurate as at October 2023. Fact sheets for the following exemptions can be found on gov.uk. Concessions, light touch, Defence and Security, Northern Ireland, Wales, Schools, Utilities. End of animation.